The NKCO Travel Backpack is a 24 liter backpack that expands to 33 liters if you wanna fill it up more or for longer trips. I'm Tom, the founder of Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and ringing that bell icon to get notifications. We've been testing this bag for the last month in Detroit, Michigan, Atlanta, Georgia, as well as San Pedro, Belize. So we're excited to dive in and go through every little detail we've noticed with you. Make sure to visit packhacker.com for the written review, as well as the best buying options that help support our channel at no cost to you. Link in the description below. Let's jump in. Kicking it off with the main material on this bag, it is a 900D polyester. On the front, we have triple coated TPU for additional weather resistance, but just note that TPU is not around the entirety of the bag. I think it's more for an aesthetic and a look thing versus weather resistance because up top here, you just have that 900D polyester. So yeah, not a ton of weather resistance going on with this bag. Also, we've seen a decent amount of marks develop on the TPU, and this isn't necessarily new for TPU. Pretty much every other TPU bag that we've tested develops scuff marks like these. So just note that if you get into this bag, you're probably gonna get scuff marks. From a branding perspective, you'll see a black on black in-case logo on the front of the bag here, as well as near the strap. You'll also see little in-case leaves on the edges of these zipper pulls, as well as where the strap attaches to the bag. And I personally like the look of this logo. At the time of this review, there are other colorways of this bag available, including Heather Gray, which features an eco-friendly 300D polyester, and Navy, which features 100% polyester on the exterior. For the overall look, we think the bag looks pretty slick, well compressed. It looks pretty bulky and a little bit saggy when fully expanded though. More on this in a little bit. Fully expanded, it's really got that boxy look, but functionally it does a pretty good job in standing up on its own, especially if you pack it right. We pulled our Instagram audience to see what they thought of the look of this bag, and here are the results. Make sure to follow Pack Hacker on Instagram if you'd like to be involved in future polls. Wrapping up the rest of the notable materials on this bag, we have beefy YKK zippers that are durable and easy to pull due to the zipper pulls. We have durable Duraflex plastic hardware on the compression straps, strap adjusters, and sternum strap. Let's start off with the harness system, which is pretty easy to understand. There are no load lifters at the top of the bag to make the carry a little bit closer to your back, so it is a little bit saggy. The straps themselves do a decent job, but they're nothing to write home about. The amount and density of padding is on the low side compared to similar bags we've tested. There's also a noticeable edge to the strap here, which can sort of cut into your chest and your shoulders if it's fully loaded with heavy gear. On the plus side, the mesh below the straps adds some really great breathability. The sternum strap is great. It's pretty much permanently attached, so you know you're not gonna lose it. There's also a bit of elastic that gives these sternum straps some flexibility, and we found that straps designed like this are a lot more comfortable to wear than ones without the elastic. And lastly, there's an elastic strap keeper that's gonna help keep that strap nicely managed for a dangle-free experience. Now there's one weird little nitpick with the buckles here. The buckles themselves act as sort of a sheath to cover up the strap on the opposite side. This promotes a nice clean look to the buckle. However, if the strap becomes even the slightest bit loose, it obstructs the buckling of the clip. It's not a deal breaker and really not even that big of a deal. However, these small design details really matter and they magnify when you're trying to rush and grab your train or your flight and you're trying to do things quickly. Moving down, these straps are easily adjustable with the Duraflex hardware. The harness system is permanently attached to the bag, so no hiding the straps like you can on other bags. We think this is fine, but this may be a deal breaker for some. Taking a look at the back panel, we have two rounded rectangles here that do a pretty good job at promoting airflow and breathability. The shape of these looks really great as a design element compared to the boxy nature of the rest of the bag. It's visually pulled together nicely and in case usually does a very solid job at this. Functionally, it's pretty hard to avoid back sweat. However, this should help a little bit. One other thing to point out here is that this entire harness system is held on by a number five YKK zipper now. YKK zippers are really great. However, number five is pretty measly compared to the larger number 10 they chose for the main compartment. If this zipper were to break, this bag would pretty much become useless except for holding it by the handles. We're surprised that InCase didn't opt for a number 10 here considering they went with the number 10 to open the main compartment of the bag. Next up, let's chat about the side handles. 
There are two pretty nice side handles on the top and where's right hand side of the bag. They generally feel nice in the hand, they're nice and padded, they have some mesh for breathability, but they're a little bit crinkly in the hand. The main thing to note here is the positioning. So when the bag is in compressed mode, they're really great and really grabbable. However, when the bag is uncompressed, it goes way to the front of the bag. So if you have a lot of weight in here, you're gonna get an angled carry with the bag. Some bag companies will skirt this by anchoring the handles at an angle to try to mitigate that, or they'll just pop it right in the center. But due to the way the in case is designed with this big compression zipper in the middle, that's not really possible. So you're pretty much left with a slightly imbalanced carrying experience that is pronounced if this is fully filled up with heavy gear. And next up, the compression system, which is compressible by zipper and by buckles. To uncompress the bag fully, just simply unzip the number eight YKK zipper and completely loosen all four compression straps. When it gets to that point, the bag is pretty wide. However, if you don't have it fully maximized, well expanded, you can grab into these compression buckles and pull them down a little bit to make the bag a little bit slimmer in profile. We really dig this and it creates some nice customizability between 24 and 33 liters. So if you don't need the full 33, maybe you wanna sit somewhere in between, just tighten up the compression straps on the sides. Just note that the compression straps are only unbuckleable on the wearer's right hand side to get access to the main clamshell. Right here there is no buckle, just kind of a strap adjustment system. When the bag is fully compressed, these compression straps can get very dangly pretty quickly. We wish they would have offered elastic keepers like they did on the sternum strap. Also, due to the way this bag compresses, there is no water bottle compartment whatsoever on the exterior. Moving on to the inside of the bag, there is some really great organization going on inside. Let's start with the laptop compartment. It opens all the way up with a number five YKK zipper and the main benefit to a design like this is that TSA may let you just unfold this fully and then put it through the security checkpoint. Generally, we've had low success rates in doing this and a lot of bags try to design things this way. Your mileage will definitely vary on that one. Overall, we really dig the padding and the softness in the laptop compartment, specifically this furry-like material inside of the laptop sleeve. The only problem with this laptop compartment is that if you drop your bag, there's really no false bottom for the laptop to sit in, so it's not suspended in the bag. Could get some damage if you drop it hard on the ground. Opposite of the laptop sleeve, you have a document sleeve where you could put a folder or other types of documents that lay flat. At the top of the bag, we have a quick grab pocket about the width of the handle on the top. It's a little bit on the small side and we've even had a little bit of trouble getting a plus sized iPhone in, so it's much better for sunglasses. And just to note, the liner is the same faux fur that we already saw on the laptop compartment. If you'd like a larger quick access pocket to dump your pockets into your bag when you're going through security, this front pocket is a lot better of a fit for that. There's ample room inside of this pocket and we really like the yellow green interior which really turns the lights on and makes it easy to see inside of this pocket. We also dig that the zipper is hidden beneath this fabric welt, promoting a clean look that goes along so well with this in-case EO travel backpack. Next up, we'll talk about the tech area, which is excellent. The zipper on the front opens up horseshoe style about halfway down the bag. On the front flap towards the bottom, we have two nylon divider pockets. Now, if you keep everything pretty fully loaded, these nylon pockets, I think, in my opinion, could be cut because you have you know, this outer pocket, this main pocket in here, and then two layers of organization. It just gets to be a little bit much. We found ourselves not utilizing those liner pockets too often. Towards the back panel, we have two stretchy mesh pockets, which are really great. One has a Apple Magic keyboard inside of a neoprene sleeve, and the other has a tech pouch. Above that, we have liner divider pockets that can cover space for items like a battery bank, snacks, pens, pencils, and styluses, and a small notebook. Above all that, there is nice ample space, so if you have taller items in here, like a notebook, that'll go there just fine. However, if you have shorter items inside of these liner pockets, you can maybe fit another pouch on top, like say a toiletries pouch, something of that nature. There's a little extra space. Next up, the main compartment, which opens suitcase style. Towards the left side, we have a smaller mesh pocket, which is good for things like socks and underwear. Or you could put your toiletry kit in there if you'd like, and you don't really need quick access to it. Above this, there's a tag that says travel well, and we dig that little reminder. On the right side, we have a neon green and yellow zipper that is really easy to spot and unzip. 
You pretty much have a cavernous space that opens up, which is ideal for packing cubes. However, you can fit loose clothing in here. It's pretty much designed like a clamshell suitcase. The liner of this bag also has this funky green material. We'd be curious to see what it would have looked like with the yellow and green liner that we see in the front pocket just for high visibility. Within this main compartment, we fit in one small and one medium Peak Design packing cube, which fit in there pretty much perfectly, as well as a shoe pouch with some sandals inside and a blunt Metro umbrella on the right side. Keep in mind that the space within this compartment is the one that compresses with the zipper, so it becomes significantly smaller when you decide to compress the bag. All in all, it's a nice, simple main compartment, and we really dig the versatility of being able to compress this bag down. Based on what you have inside, it makes it really versatile. At the time of this review, we have been testing this bag in Michigan, Georgia, and Belize. In Michigan, we've pretty much been using it as an everyday bag. We found this bag to be a bit large to fully fit that use case, but if you're looking for one bag to do it all, this is a solid contender and does an excellent job with everyday items due to the low profile and thoughtful organization going on with the bag. As a one bag travel pack, it is pretty solid as well. It's great to organize with all of the thoughtful pocket layout, although some of the design details like the positioning of the handle and lackluster harness system were a pain to use at times. Generally, we have liked testing this bag in those two use cases, and we think it's overall a pretty solid bag. So to wrap this thing up with some pros and cons, starting with the pros, there is thoughtful organization and access on the bag. The bag is expandable from 24 liters to 33 liters, it is great for versatile modes of carry. The look is streamlined and has some great functionality to boot. On to some of the cons, the buckles can be hard to use. If the straps get in the way at all, the buckles will not engage. The position of the grab handles are not ideal while expanded. And the harness system is lackluster. It could be more comfortable and robust and we're a little bit nervous about the number five YKK zipper holding it all together. The in-case EO travel backpack offers some excellent organization and thoughtful access. It's streamlined, but functional. And the expandability makes it super versatile for both EDC and long-term travel. We've really enjoyed packing this thing out with our daily essentials and loading it up for longer trips. Although some areas of the bag feel a little bit cheap and lackluster, namely the harness system, if you're looking for a backpack that can be used daily and for travel, the in-case EO is a great option. So there you have it, our review of the InCase EO Travel Backpack. We would love to hear what you think of this thing in the comments below, so let us know what you think. Thanks for keeping it here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next video.